Look at this image over here. And let me ask you, do you know which is my favorite candlestick pattern? Is it the morning star, the piercing pattern, the engulfing pattern? Well, let me tell you, right? My favorite candlestick pattern is actually this, the hammer. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, Reina, I know, I just need to spot a hammer on a chart and then I click buy. No, not quite yet, my friend, because if you were to do that, you will find that you'll, you'll get a lot of unnecessary losses, right? So we don't just want to blindly buy a hammer when we see on a chart. So likewise, we don't just marry any random girl that we see on the street. We have to do a little bit of research and I'll explain to you later what I look for right, before I trade the hammer. But before we get to that, right, I need to make sure that we are all on the same page, right? Because some people, they don't even understand what a hammer means, right? So let me explain to you what a hammer means. A hammer is a bullish reversal candlestick pattern, right? Why is that a reversal? Because you can see over here, this at this price point is the opening price. This over here is the closing price. And this is the high of the time period. So let's say you spot this hammer on a daily time frame. Let's put here daily. You will see that this refers to the high of the day. And this over here is the low of the day. So if you think about this, right, the story of a hammer goes something like this. The market opened at this price point, And then the sellers took control and pushed the price down lower near this lows of the day. At the maximum pessimism, right, during the day, the buyers somehow find the motivation, the courage, the strength to push the sellers, right, all the way up higher and finally closing near the highs of the day. So you can see that initially, during the early part of the day, the sellers were in control, driving the price down lower and eventually the buyers stepped in and pushed the price up higher. So it's kind of like Avengers, right? If you watch Avengers Endgame, you remember that, you know, Captain America is all alone facing Thanos' army. So at that point in time, right, it's full of pessimism, right? I thought, man, that guy's going to get killed, right? And what happens, right? There's this, uh, the Birdman, I think his friend called Sam, right? Flown in. The next thing you know, the portal starts to open up. Then Black Panther turn up. Wakanda forever! Right? And then they, they fought, right? And after which the good guys, you know, they win the war. So same thing over here, right? The buyers initially, they were getting suppressed by the sellers, but eventually they overcome and kind of like win the battle, right? In this case, it's a... Uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, reference, yeah? So the opposite of a hammer is kind of like what we call a shooting star pattern. So this is just the inverse. A shooting star pattern is where the price open at this price point. It closes at this price. This is the high. If you look at this on the daily time frame, this is the high of the day. And this is the low of the day, right? So it's just the opposite. When the market open, the buyers quickly push the price up higher, right? Eventually the sellers say, uh-uh, that's as high as you'll go. And then they drive the price down lower, eventually closing near the lows of the day over here. So it's like, you know, you uh, didn't study for your exam, right? And then you got back your results. Man, I got an A despite not studying. Well, you're all over the moon, right? Filled with, you know, happiness. And then a short while later, you realize, man, it's not A, as in A for a good grade, but A for absent. And then your whole world come crashing down, right? So kind of like this shooting star pattern over here. And of course, the hammer and the shooting star pattern are not the only two real reversal candlestick patterns out there. Another similar variation of the hammer is the bullish engulfing pattern. It's a very similar story, just that instead of expressing it as a single candle, you're expressing it as two candles. So the first candle over here, you can see the sellers are in control, closing near the lows of the day. And the second candle is where the buyers stepped in and pushed the price to close near the highs of the day over here. So this, show, this is the closing price for the first day. This is the closing price of the second day. So you can, can see, right, it's like the hammer, right? Sellers in control, buyers step in, push the price up higher, close near the highs of the day. So likewise, the bearish engulfing pattern, similar story, all right? I don't think you need me to go through this, or I'll just do it quickly, right? So initially, right, buyers close near the highs of the day. The next day, the sellers took control and pushed the price and finally closing near the lows of the day. So now, moving on, let's talk about how not to trade candlestick patterns because this is a mistake that I would say many traders make, okay? So let me share with you an example. So a new trader, right, they might look at this chart and then they say, oh man, Rina, look at this big, nice, juicy green candle, right? This is a sign of reversal. After all, look at the price. It broke above resistance. It's a breakout. It's time to buy. And if you were to do that, right, here's what happens next. You can see that this market pretty much collapsed down lower, right? Over here, it collapsed down lower and you will likely have gotten stopped up of your trade, okay? Another example. This over here, you can see that this market is uh, in an uptrend and then we have this consecutive red candles in a row. And to most traders, they think, oh man, Rina, look how bearish this is. You know, the size of the red candles getting bigger and bigger. The price, it has broke below support. The trend is now down. It's time to short, short, short. And if you were to do that, right, if you were to short this market, sell this market, here's what happens next. The market pretty much rallied up higher over here. Okay, so the gist of this is very simple. How not to trade candlestick is this. You don't want to base your buying or selling decisions based on the color of the candlestick. Just because it's a big green candle doesn't mean it's a buy. Just because it's a big red candle doesn't mean it's a sell. There's more to it and I want to explain to you right now how to trade candlestick patterns.
And by the way, if you are enjoying this training so far, smash the thumbs up button. If not, hit subscribe. Go do it. I'm waiting. First thing you want to pay attention to is to know what is the trend. What, by knowing what is the trend, right, you will be able to answer this question. What do you do? Do you look for buying opportunities or selling opportunities? So let me give you an example. Look at this chart over here. And let me ask you, is this market in an uptrend or a downtrend? The way to define trend is very simple. In an uptrend, you will see a series of higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, and higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. So if you look from left to right, if you really can't draw these higher highs and higher lows, you look from left all the way to the right. If the market is going up higher, we call this an uptrend, simple. And when the market is in an uptrend, we look for, what do we look for? Buying opportunities, right? We look for buying opportunities. And, and by the way, don't get me wrong. Just because the market is in an uptrend doesn't mean we immediately, you know, click the buy button. No, we look for other things as well. But at least at this stage, right, we know what is our bias to look for buying opportunities or shorting opportunities. Next one, have a look at this chart. Let me ask you, what is the trend? The trend is in a downtrend. Why is that? Because if you gain reference from left to right, you can see that the market is heading down progressively over time. And if you look at your higher highs and higher lows, or rather in this case, lower highs, lower highs, and lower highs, and lower low, lower low, lower low, it's progressively going down lower over time. So this means that you want to look for selling opportunities in such a market condition. So as you know, right, you don't want to buy just because the market is in an uptrend or sell just because in a downtrend. So the question now is, you know, where exactly do you buy and sell on the chart? And this brings us to number two, the area of value. This, right, simply helps you answer the question, where do you buy or sell? So let me explain. So if you look at this chart again over here, this one over here, you can see that the market is in an uptrend. Okay, series of higher highs and higher lows. Now the question is, you know, where exactly do you buy on the chart? Where are the opportunities to buy? That's a great question. And we can utilize concepts like support and resistance. So support is very simple. It's an area on your chart where buying pressure could step in to push the price higher. So for example, this is an area of support. Why is this an area of support? Because if you look at this chart, previously this was resistance, price broke above resistance, then it came back retest as support. Go up higher, retest support, go up higher, retest support, support, and then it broke out higher. So again, this is an area of support. Another area of support that you can see is this one over here. Okay, why is this an area of support? Again, previous resistance, price broke out, retest as support, breaks out, and now possibly coming to retest this area of support. So if you are looking at this chart and you are looking for buying opportunities, I would want you to pay attention to these two areas on your chart because these are areas where you can look for opportunities to get long, right? So this is an example of area of value. Now let's do the inverse. In this case, this is a downtrend. So where do we look for selling opportunities? Where on a chart do we want to find no uh, opportunities to sell? So in this case, what I'm seeing is over, this one over here. This is an area of value. So notice how this is previous uh, support, support, price breaks below support and become resistance, tested once, slip down lower, retest a second time, head down even lower and now it's back at this area once again, right? at this area of resistance. And that's how I would draw this area of value. Another one I'm seeing over here is this, possibly this one here, okay? And here's the thing, right? When I draw my support resistance on a chart, when I draw my area of value, I try not to have too many levels on the chart because let's face it, right? Let me just give you an example. Let's say we have this one over here and maybe let's say this one over here, okay? There's no need to draw, let's say, you know, over, over here as well, over here as well. Why is that? Because imagine this, if the price do go up higher, and retest back around this level over here. You look at this chart, does this look still look bearish to you? No, this in fact might be the start of a new uptrend. So this is why I try not to have too many uh, support resistance on the chart. I usually draw the two most recent ones because those are the ones that are most important. If the price has broke, right, the two most recent, let's say resistance in this case, probably the trend has already changed and I want to look for buying opportunities, right, no longer shorting opportunities. Now you might be thinking, okay, Rainer, so I wait for the market to be in a downtrend, it comes into resistance and I sell. Well, not quite yet, my friend, because the third, th third thing we're going to look for is our entry trigger. And this is where our candlestick patterns knowledge that you've learned earlier comes into play. Because entry trigger, what it does is to answer the question, when to buy or sell? When, right? So you can see over here, I like to bold the first word. Earlier was, you know, what, where, and now it's when. When to buy or sell. So again, using entry triggers, you can use the patterns you've learned earlier, like the hammer. Why, why is the hammer significant? Because again, if you recall, right, hammer tells you that the buyers, they are temporarily in control. Right, earlier, the price was pushed down lower than the buyers took control and pushed the price up higher, closing near the highs of the day. So if you have, you know, trading the direction of trend, trading from an area of value, and then you have this hammer as an entry trigger, you will greatly put the odds in your favor for that trade. 
Likewise, the inverse is true for shooting star pattern. If you imagine the market is in a downtrend, it comes to an area of resistance, you get a shooting star pattern. Again, right, the odds are, are better for you, right, as the market could possibly, you know, head down lower. And of course, the hammer and shooting star pattern are not the only two patterns. You've learned also the bullish engulfing pattern and the bearish engulfing pattern. As much as I would like to say this is a holy grail where you have a 100% winning rate, unfortunately, that's not the case, right? Because this trading strategy that I'm sharing with you, it will have losses as well. So to contain our losses, we must know, right? our exits. So for exits, right, very simple. It's six to answer the question when to exit your trade. So when we deal with exits, there are two parts. Number one, exit where you're wrong, aka your stop loss. And the other one is exit if you're right, otherwise known as your target profit. So let's talk about the first one, exit if you are wrong. So for me, right, when it comes to stop loss, right, exiting when I'm wrong, I like to set my stop loss at a very logical level. The stop loss right, must be at the level where it invalidates my trading setup. So let me give you an example. Let's say the market is in an uptrend, okay? And it retests back this area of support and then, and then maybe it bounce up higher over here and then and over here is a signal to buy. Okay, let's say over here it's a buy. You buy over here. Now let me ask you, where will you set your stop loss? Will you set your stop loss at let's say for example over here A, over here B, or over here A? C. You will you set it A, B, or C? Take five seconds to think about this. Ready? One to five. Okay. The answer is this, right? I would set my stop loss, right? Okay, right? Why not let's go through each each option first, right? So first one, A. A is a good, it's not a good level to set your stop loss. Why is that? It's because you can imagine right, if the market makes any slight reversal or slight blip lower, you will get stopped out of your trade. And the funny thing is that when you get stopped out of your trade, support is not even broken. Support is still pretty much intact because A is over here, right? You'll get stopped out of the trade while support is still holding up. So that's not a, a good level to set your stop loss. Now, what about B? So if the price reaches to B, right, you can see that it has retest support. But has support been broken? Well, at the point in time, B, right, support is still not broken because your stop loss is smack at support. And remember, support is an area on your chart, not a level. So just because the price has retested the level at B doesn't mean that, you know, uh, support is broken. So if you ask me, right, I will want to set my stop loss at C because imagine if the price comes down lower and touch C. At this point, clearly support over here is broken. And when support is broken, my trading setup is invalidated and I want to get out of the trade. Okay, so later I'll share with you an example on how to set your stop loss. But the concept behind it, right, is uh, what I've shared with you earlier. This is the concept, the idea behind setting my stop loss. Now, what about exit if you are right? So again, let's say, for example, let's say the market is in a range, it goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down, and let's say bounce up, you buy over here. Let's say you buy at this price point. Okay, now let me ask you, wh where do you want to take profit? Do you want to take profit at, let's say, uh, A, B, or C? Where do you want to take profits? So let's, Look at this one by one, right? What about, let's say, what about A? I wouldn't want to be taking profits at A. Why is that? It's because there is no, A is kind of like in the middle of nowhere. If I take my profits over here at A, right? I'm kind of like leaving profits on the table because it's pretty much in no man's land, okay? What about B, right? I wouldn't want to actually take profits at B. Why do I want to take profits at B? It's because I know that B, right, is just before an area of resistance, so if I set my target profit level at B just before an area of resistance, I have a good chance of, you know, exiting this trade for a profit and also, right, respecting this price structure over here, the area of resistance where sellers might come in and push the price down lower. Now, what about C? Why don't I want to take profits at C? Very simple, right? Yeah, yes, C will give me more profit potential. But if you think about this, right, for the price to reach C, it has to break above this area of resistance. And I'm actually making the market work harder to give me a profit. And whenever I make the market work harder for me, it makes me suffer. So I don't want that. So usually when it comes to taking profit, I like to take it at B just before, you know, the key price structure on the chart. So let's do a quick recap, shall we, to what we have just learned. Number one, we talk about don't trade candlestick patterns in isolation. This means that, you know, if the candle is green, doesn't mean it's a buy. When it's red, doesn't mean it's, it's a sell. I share with you a very simple formula earlier. First is to look at the trend, then the area of value. The trend tells you, you know, what to do, whether to look for buying opportunities or selling opportunities. The area of value tells you where to buy, right? To buy maybe at support or resistance. The entry trigger, you learn candlestick patterns like the hammer, shooting star, etc. And then we talk about exits, right? Where to exit if you are wrong and where to exit if you're right. So now I want to share with you some examples so you can see how all these concepts right, come together. Okay, this first example is the chart of our Swiss franc against the Japanese yen, the daily time frame. So first thing is the trend. Let me ask you, what is the trend? Is it up or down? You can see the market is in an uptrend. Good. Next one, where is the area of value? Okay, you can pause this video and you know visually identify the area of value. But for me, here's where I'll draw it. Over here is one. 
and possibly another one over here okay these are the two area of value on my chart right so why is, did i plot this two level because this is previous resistance price breakout retest as support previous resistance price breakout retest as support so now price could possibly come back to this area of value or this one over here now why don't i draw area of value let's say uh, over here or maybe over, over here well, because at this level and this level, I don't want to be buying at that price point because the, if the market do reach that level, the market is probably already in a downtrend. I don't want to buy in a downtrend. I only want to look for selling opportunities in a downtrend. So no point drawing those two levels because if the price do get to it, the trend would have already reversed and I'm, I'm no longer you know looking for buying opportunities. So now that we have spot, right, these are two area of value, the two block, blue box over here. Next thing, we are looking for a valid entry trigger to go along. As you know, you've learned things like your hammer, your bullish engulfing pattern. So let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market came into our area of value, but do we have an entry trigger to go along? Let's find out. Yep, we have it, right? The market form a hammer and this tells us that, hey, you know, the buyers are now temporarily in control. So if you understand the story behind this, you can see that the market overall is in an uptrend. The market make a pullback towards this area of value. In area of value is where buying pressures could step in and push the price higher. And you got clues, right, that buyers are stepping in because the market opened over here, tried to break down lower, couldn't, but reverse eventually and close near the highs of the day. So this tells you that buyers are stepping in. So what you can do is to go long, right, on the next candle open. So let's say next candle open over here, right? This will be our, our entry price, right, the opening price. So let's just say we change this to green to signify our entry. What about stop loss? So for stop loss, right, I like to, if you remember, right, we like to set it a distance away from price structure, a point where it will invalidate our trading setup. So you can see that this is an area of support. So if the price breaks below this area of support, we want to be out of the trade. So where, at which exact price point, right, do we know we want to get out of the trade? So one way to kind of like quantify that answer is to actually use the ATR indicator, right? So it's, I'll just show you average true range. Click on this. Okay, I'll just uh, delete this one. I'll use this one, right? The settings I use is uh, 20 period. I mean, there are 20 period and SMA. You click OK. So what you'll do is to find out what is the ATR value. Okay, so you can see that right now the ATR value is 1.221. What this tells you is that over the last 20 trading days, right, the market moves an average of $1.221 uh, per day. Okay, and the way to kind of like know where exactly to set your stop loss is to find out the low of this candle and minus 1.221. So the low of this candle, right, is actually, let me just bring my cursor here, is 137.15. Okay, so 137.15. So I'll just take 137.15. This is the low over here. And I minus off with one ATR, which is 1.221. And what does it give me? I'm just going to pull out my trusty calculator and I get uh, 0.221. I'm just going to round up to make things easier. 135.93. Okay, so this will be my stop loss level. So what I'm going to do is to bring out this line over here. I'll just change this to red to signify stop loss. And it's at 135.93. Okay, and there you have it. This is my stop loss level. And if you recall, what about target? Where do we want to exit if the market moves in our favor? So usually I like to set my target just before right, the recent swing high, just before resistance. And from what I'm seeing on the chart, right, this is an area where sellers might come in to push the price lower. So just put this, let's just, just change this to blue and to signify our target profit. So now for those of you who want to, you know, be a little bit more, uh, or rather want to know what is your risk to reward on the trade, you can actually use this tool. Just click on this, long position, since you're looking at a long trade, click on this. And green is your entry price. I just press the tool on the over here, shift this one over here to your stop loss level, which is the red one. And this top one over here, which is the blue one, which is your target. And it'll tell you what is your potential risk to reward on this particular trade. So I'm just gonna adjust it slightly to be a bit more accurate. Okay, so you can see that your potential risk to reward on this trade is one, 0.13 as shown over here. This means that you're risking a dollar to potentially make one dollar and thirteen cents. And since uh, this is a cherry pick chart, all right, you can see that the market yeah eventually did reach our target over here, and you have exited with a profit. Now let me share with you an advanced strategy, right, using the concepts that you have learned earlier. So this advanced strategy will help you identify a. Uh, low risk trading opportunities, but at the same time, I offer you a more favorable risk to reward on your trade. So this means you can possibly you know, risk a dollar to make $4 or more. So here's how it works, right? So first thing first, again, what is the trend in this uh, market condition? So you can see this market is in a downtrend. Downtrend, we look for selling opportunities. So where is the area of value on the chart? So in this case, the area of value is what I'm seeing over here. I will draw it somewhere about here. This is the area of value that I'm looking at. So if you recall right earlier, the basic strategy is where you look for a 
price rejection or a reversal candlestick pattern at this area of value. But to take things a step further, this advanced strategy, you can actually go down to a lower time frame, right, to fine tune your entry. By doing that, right, your stop loss, right, is smaller, it's tighter, and this means that you get a more favorable risk to reward on the trade. So in this case, let's go down to the eight hour time frame. So the eight hour time frame, this is the area of value that I've highlighted earlier, the same one. What we're looking for now is again, the same thing price rejection at this high. So we are looking for the price to come up higher and give us a bearish price rejection. Could be something like a shooting star pattern. And then from here, we will enter our trade. So imagine this, right? If you're entering on an eight hour time frame, you're going to be much earlier compared to someone on the daily time frame. And when you're trading on an eight hour time frame, your stop loss is going to be tighter, smaller because the range movements of this uh, market on this time frame is smaller compared to the range movement on a daily time frame. I mean, it's, it's it's logical, right? You know, the price movement on a five minutes time frame is much smaller compared to a weekly time frame. So same thing, the eight hour time frame, the price movement is going to be smaller compared to the daily time frame. So let's see what happens next. So in this case, market tried to rally up higher, okay? And over here, we have a bearish price rejection looking something like a shooting star pattern. So what we can do is to go short on the next candle open, right? So let's say we go this one over here. Let's say our entry price is over here. I'll just change this to green to signify uh, the entry price. Okay. I'm not going to do the... Uh, I'll just remove this box. So it's quite irritating. So I'm not going to do the ATR calculation for stop loss because you already know how to do it, right? So I'll just, you know... In, in Singapore lingo, we call it aga aga. We just estimate, right? So I'll estimate the stop loss, the one ATR stop loss to be about here. Okay, so, and by the way, right, when you set your one ATR stop loss, right, the ATR value will be on based on the eight hour time frame. You can reference the daily time frame if you want, right? But I usually use the eight hour time frame so I get a nice tight stop loss. And as for target, you can see that over here we have a few levels, right, where buyers might step in and to push the price higher. So the first one, I'll say this is one possible area worth paying attention to. I'll put this to blue, okay? And since, right, you've, this is the first, uh, this is uh, our target, right? And since, right, you've seen that on the daily time frame, this market is in a downtrend. There's actually a good possibility that this market could also retest this low over here. So for target, I would also have another target, right, just before this area or swing low, okay? So if you go back to the eight hour time frame, it looks something like this. So at this point, now we have multiple targets, right? This green is our entry. This red is our stop loss. And this blue here, we call it TP1, our first target. And this one is our second target. Okay, so in this case that you can see that instead of, you know, using the daily time frame to fine tune your, to, to enter your trade, you're now using a lower time frame to enter your trades earlier and thereby, you know, improving your overall risk to reward on the trade. So in this case, right, again, I mean, this is a cherry pick chart and you can see that price, right, would have, you know, hit your first target over here. And, and let's say once the price has hit your first target, there are times where it just simply, you know, starts to move against you and then hit your stop loss. And if it does happen, right, don't worry because this will probably just be a break-even trade because imagine if you buy, I mean, you short, let's say, uh, one lot, right, of this, this market, you will exit 0 0.5 lot, 0 0.5 lot at this first target profit in the bank. And your remaining 0 0.5 lot, let's say the market reaches your stop loss over here, right? So 0 0.5 lot, this one over here is a loss. This one here is a target. So overall, this trade will probably be a small profit or a break even. Yeah, so that's kind of like a uh, how multiple targets work. So we can see that in this case, the market did uh, eventually hit down lower and, you know, hit our second target as well. So overall, I mean, as I've said, it's a cherry pick chart. This trade would have, you know, worked pretty beautifully in your favor. But bear in mind, right, there are times where, you know, the market could also, you know, reverse against you, hit your stop loss, and that's the reality of trading. Okay, so this is a live trade that I actually took and I want to walk you through my thought process step-by-step step using the concepts that you've just learned. So again, when I look at this chart, the first thing I ask myself, what is the trend? Market is in an uptrend. Then I ask myself, where is the area of value? So over here, I spotted this area of value, this area of support over here. So at this price point, right, when the market uh, at this juncture, I was actually looking for buying opportunities. I was looking for the price to retest this area of support, right, and then get rejected to close back above it so I can look for an entry to go long. After all, this market is in an uptrend, right? This was my, my top process, right? Trading in the direction of the trend. So as you can see, the market then hit down lower, big bearish candle. This doesn't really frighten me because I've seen many times where there's a strong, big bearish candle coming to support. You might think, oh man, support's going to break, right? Just pay attention to it. Next thing you know, the market reverse up higher and then you got caught, right? Got caught by the market. So this is what happened, right? Then next market break below support, right? People thought, man, this market is going to, it's going to crap, right? And then we have this reversal candle over here looking something like a bullish engulfing pattern okay so at this price point i i went long on the next candle uh, open okay so i'm just, just going to show you i'll just remove this first this was my entry okay 
I'll change this to green. And for stop loss, is uh, again using the ATR concept I shared with you was about here at a point in time, somewhere about here. Okay, just change this to red. Now, what about my target, right? So this one, I was actually having a target just before this area of resistance, somewhere about here was my target in blue. Okay, so let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market pretty much hit my stop loss very quickly. So the point I'm sharing this with you is that this is not the holy grail. I think I've repeated this, you know, a number of times already. So again, take what I've shared with you, go and test it out on your own, you know, demo testing, forward testing, whatever works for you, right? To make it work for you. Because you, as you've seen, right, this concept can be tweaked, right, to your needs, whether you want to go with a basic version, advanced version, trading across a different time frames, like maybe the 15 minutes and one hour, it's entirely up to you. And since we are on the topic of, you know, candlestick patterns, my favorite candlestick pattern, if you want to learn more about it, you can go down to my website, uh, tradingwithrainer.com over here. Just scroll down over here at the bottom. We have this free uh, monster guide to candlestick pattern where we share with you uh, how you can actually use it to better time your entries and exits right this guide is completely free just click this orange button enter your email over here and i'll send it to your email address for free right so again go ahead and do it right now i'll put the link somewhere below this video and i will talk to you soon